Welcome to Inside APG, creating one community without a gate. Now, here's your host, Tracy Hart. This is Tracy Hart with Inside APG, and I'm really excited to be sitting here with Mr. Stephen Kreider, who is the Program Executive Officer for the Intelligence, Electronics, Warfare, and Sensors Program here over at APG. Thank you so much for being here and meeting with me today. Tracy, it's a pleasure. Looking forward to the conversation. What is the mission of the PEO, IE, WNS program? Our mission is to provide affordable equipment to the soldier that covers those capabilities that touch on the intelligence side of the house, that touch on the force protection, for example, against improvised explosive devices, that help the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance think of that as cameras, radars, sensors that tell you what people are doing and what's going on so that you can, in essence, give an an overall picture or understanding of the battlefield to the soldier, to the commander, so that he can make the decisions on the battlefield. Okay, so you touched on IEDs. You know, we hear in the news all the time that they're still having issues with those. So what is the PEO, IEWNS, doing to help combat those type of threats? Improvised explosive devices, meaning anything that you can trigger an explosive device, homemade, and so trying to understand and be able to go against all the different options is the challenge. Most of them at this particular point are what we call radio controlled. In other words, your car door opener is a, an electronic device that sends a signal to some receiver inside your car to open the door. And so what we are looking at is providing capabilities that stop that communication process, jam that signal. So I'm pushing my car door opener and the car door doesn't open. So that's the main concept of electronic warfare of countering improvised explosive devices. Now, you want to find them, so we want to look at sensors that are penetrating radar in the ground to see where the ground has been disturbed. Has somebody laid a wire? Because other than an electronic device, if I have a push button and it's wired to the bomb, then I don't have to worry about the, you jamming my electronic device. I want to be able to understand where that wire is, where that bomb is, so that I go after the trigger man because he now has to be in line of sight to see the bomb to trigger it when a vehicle goes by or something. So what sensor systems do you need to see the individual going into the road? In other words, persistent surveillance. I want to be watching the road all the time. Security. Think of it as security in a mall or a store. I want to see people coming in the back door. I want to see the movement of it. That's the type of sensors that we're talking about that we provide. So there's many ways to attack how do you defeat an improvised explosive device. That's our side of the house. Other parts of the Army will do things like how do you put more armor on vehicles so that the particular explosive device will be either deflected or not be able to penetrate. That's not the part of the process that we do. Ours is in the electronic side of the house and in the sensor side of the house. Well, talking about sensors, also there's always an issue when it comes to aircraft. Now, are you working on sensors or are there different programs that help with the aircraft from being shot down as well? So there's two components of aircraft. And the first one is what we call aircraft survivability. So it is sensors on whether it's a fixed-wing aircraft, whether it's on a helicopter, whether it's on an unmanned aerial vehicle or on a balloon that sense, for example, a heat-seeking missile coming at you. Tells you that a heat-seeking missile is coming. You then deploy flares to, or you do a diversion movement. That system, that aircraft survival equipment, we do that for the entire Army. The other side of it is using those platforms to go out and do the sensing. The balloons are a primary example. Persistent tethered systems. In other words, a balloon flies over a fixed site, constantly has a camera around the entire area, sees the movement, everything coming toward the base. The information goes through a tethered wire to the ground and you can analyze it. Well, they're in the mountains. So you don't have the balloon over the mountains. That's where your unmanned aerial vehicle is going to fly or your aircraft is going to fly that has sensors on it at night, thermal, ground movement. So I understand where movements are. I can see people coming over the mountains or carrying resupply. Uh, I'm looking for the particular explosives that have a chemical component to them. And so I'm looking for that chemical component structure. The Aircraft, the balloons, the unmanned aerial vehicles just become a platform 
that can move the sensor to where you need it. From a standpoint of a large area, be able to provide protection for these soldiers, but from a large area standpoint, what is the PEO IEWNS doing to help with that? So it's uh, what we call a layered construct. All our forces are in fixed operating bases. So we provide all the security cameras that look at all the entrances on and off of a base, that look around the perimeter. We have a balloon that flies above the base. So you have another base that's 20 kilometers away. Coverage between the two bases now, two balloons, two 10 kilometers each, we can see everything between the two bases. So there might be a firefight or something at, at one base. This base can see that and understand that and prepare appropriately, and you can watch the enemy as they move in or move out. You then go to the unmanned aerial aircraft, so that you're flying over the mountains or a much larger perspective, or you get a fixed wing that flies for seven, eight hours. Think of how far a plane can fly and how much space that they can cover, where you're constantly looking at it. And then we go to the next level, which we don't talk a lot about, is the satellite side of the house. We have national assets, what we call them, that have certain capabilities, working with the agencies that own those and getting that information into the Army to be able to be used. So with so much information that is being gathered, how do you go about processing all the information? That's a great question, Tracy, and and that's really one of the challenges that we have in our information environment these days. With so many sensors that collect so much information, we're not talking the megabytes and, and such that we talk about our computers. We're not talking, we're talking petabytes. There's so much information that's collected across these sensors. That's the real challenge. How do we collect it? How do we process it so that we use it to give back information to the soldier to be able to make a decision? We have a system, a program manager particularly focused on this, is the PM manager for the Distributed Common Ground Station Army. We call DSIGS Army. So there's a DSIGS Air Force, a DSIGS Navy, et cetera. It is a system that we call, simplified terms, the catcher's mitt. Its job is to collect all the information. Its job is to process it and provide it back to the soldier so that he can make the decisions. Again, the mission of the PEO is to provide situational awareness, understanding of the environment so that the decision maker can make a decisive decision. So, for example, the DSIG system that exists today has over 500 different sources of information that are fed into it. I'll give you an example. In Afghanistan today, we collect all that information. We don't process it in Afghanistan. We process it at Fort Gordon, Georgia, and send the information back in an analyzed form in real time to the soldiers in the field to make their decisions. The key with DSIGs, and as I said, because of multiple services, is if I have an Air Force asset flying over, I want to be able to get that information. If an Air Force is going in to support the Army, it wants to know what the Army sensors are saying. So the real challenge is to ensure that across all the services, how do we have a construct that is common information, common way to look at it so that we all can share it. I can see what they've collected, they can see what I've collected, and we can analyze it together. That's the challenge of DSIGS and what it does for us, and it's doing a great job in Afghanistan right now. So from an electronic warfare standpoint, where do you see the future going? So the current construct is designed for the war that we currently have that's primarily defensive from electronic warfare against those improvised explosive devices. The Army stood up a new plan, IEWS, uh, Integrated Electronic Warfare System, which is the next generation where it's offensive and defensive and manages a spectrum, spectrum being that electronic environment. Because if we do a jamming system, At the same time, if we have a radio system that's communicating on the same frequency, we're jamming our own (laughs) communication. So spectrum management is you have all these sensors, you have all these radios, you have all these things using the electronic environment. How do you manage them so they don't impact each other? Mm -hmm. The offensive side of it is how do we impact the enemy's ability to track our systems with their sensors to understand our electronic environment by collecting it. And so that is the direction that we're going to look at it more holistically as, ju- as opposed to just the defensive side of the house. So how does the PEO, i.e. WNS, work with the other military branches? Well, as a program executive officer, I'm primarily focused on the Army side of the house. Electronic warfare is, a, is an example of where we don't. 
We have created a organization called a single manager who's responsible for electronic warfare against uh, across all the services. Some of our programs are joint. For example, aircraft survivability. We do the aircraft survivability for all rotary aircraft, not just ours, but also for the Navy, for the Marine Corps. It depends upon individual programs, but our environment is to try and get that within the Department of Defense is do as much of those type of integrations across services, across agencies, for example, the Central Intelligence Agency and others that we also work with. Okay, so now with DOD facing some challenges here with budgeting, how is that affecting your mission or what you guys are trying to do here? Clearly, we are on the downslope of a war, and so our budgets are decreasing. All of the Army across systems took a roughly a 9% cost reduction against all systems this year. I expect we will take some additional cuts next year as part of the National Defense Authorization Act, what we call the Sequestration or Budget Control Act of 2011, which shows some additional reductions. That will impact programs. We will have to, across the Army, prioritize them. And so we're in that process because of the changing environment that we're in. But that won't affect the soldiers that are on the war front currently. So our number one mission currently is to support the warfighter. Right? We are within the Army. That's our number one priority. There's nothing that they are asking for to support their mission that we're not providing. This is the continuous preparation for the next war, next capability that we're really talking about at this point. Thank you so much, Mr. Kreider, for sitting here with me and explaining what the Program Executive Officer for the Intelligence, Electronics, Warfare, and Sensors, what you guys do. Thank you so much for being here. Tracy, it's a pleasure, and it's, I'd just like to say that as one of the many tenants here at Aberdeen Proving Ground, this is a team effort with my other Program Executive Officers, the staff at the C4I community, and the many other organizations. This is a team effort here to support the soldier, and it's a pleasure to be here. A great place to work. And those that are looking for a job, I hope you come look our way because we've got great challenges and, and need in supporting our country, and this is just a great place to work. Well, there you go. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Again, this is Tracy Hart, and we, I've been speaking with Mr. Stephen Kreider, who is the Program Executive Officer for the Intelligence, Electronics, Warfare, and Sensors here at APG. I'm Tracy Hart with Inside APG. This has been Inside APG. To learn more about this program or about 970 WAMD, visit their website at khztv.com.